All right, so wow, we made it to 300,000 subscribers. That's pretty crazy. That's more than I ever thought I'd have. Um, I remember when I started, I thought that if I ever got to a thousand, you know, I'd do something crazy. Uh, then I remember people saying like, oh, if you ever reach 10,000, you should read erotica or something. And I was like, yeah, okay. If I ever reach 10,000, I'll do that. Um, obviously I never did and I'm not going to cause that's stupid, but, uh, yeah. So I don't really know what to do for like a 300,000 subscriber special, but I thought it'd be fun to redo one of the first stories I did. In this instance, I'm going to be doing the first story I ever did as well as one that I did a few days later. The reason for that is just because one of them's only like four minutes long and uh, I wanted to, you know, do something more than just a four minute video. So what we'll be doing in this one is I have two stories from when I first started. I'm going to narrate them, all the sound design, all that stuff. And then I'm going to play the original narration after it so that you guys can kind of see a, you know, side by side comparison of what it was like when I started versus like, you know, how I've progressed now, so. Yeah, thank you all so much. I don't really know what else to say other than that. And... Yeah, I'm sorry. Ah, yeah, I got nothing, so I'm just gonna start it now. I used to work at an old thrift store. A mere four years ago, I was in a rough patch and working part-time at an old thrift store a few miles from where I lived. I was the only employee other than the owner himself. The owner was a small elderly man with little to no family, and now that I think about it, he never mentioned if he had one. He kept to himself, but always was very nice to anyone he met, including me. His name was Dan. I'm pretty sure that wasn't his real name, but I didn't care to ask. Dan took me in when I didn't have much, and I felt like I would do anything for him. He didn't have much either, since the clientele at the thrift store wasn't exactly popping. The store gave a very down-at-the-creek type vibe and was apparently built with the owner's bare hands, or so he said. He was old but didn't give the impression of being a man of physical labor. I didn't question it. From time to time, things would break and doors would fall off their hinges and I would do my best to put them back together. This place was no doubt showing its age but it felt like home. The first thing someone would notice about the store is its unique existence among the wild. I mean, with no exaggeration, the store was surrounded by miles and miles of trees and would often feel desolate. We had our regulars who would stop by, but other than that, foot traffic was bleak. Dan would usually work the mornings up until noon, and me the second half, which usually meant closing the store by myself. Then, one night... I wouldn't say I was necessarily afraid of the dark, but when closing shop, I felt a heightened awareness around me. I felt like something was watching. I just didn't know what. By then, the sun was long gone and all I could do was see the dark outline of the towering trees. I didn't actually experience anything crazy, but I, I knew something was off. I brushed it off, got in my car and drove home. Trying to sleep that night was a bitch, tossing and turning. I felt a migraine rushing in like a destructive tsunami. I took some pain medication, then quickly dozed off into a dream. The dream was visceral. All I could see were swarms of vibrant colors swirling and swishing around, moving like mist against the wind. Then suddenly the dream shifted. I was back at the thrift store. There I was, standing in front of this old but all too familiar thrift store. The night was dark as can be, and my ears were numb from a chilling freeze. Directly behind the building sat a ginormous presence. In fact, this thing was colossal. I trembled, hardly able to speak, and not knowing exactly what to say, I gave a very hesitant, he hello? Without warning, this beast the size of a 20 or 30 story building starts flapping its wings and sends me flying on my ass, jetting its massive body straight up into the air. It began to hover over me, wings flapping with tremendous force making it hard to breathe. I tried to grip the ground as best I could but I was no match for this destructive force causing me to glide every which way. 
I surrendered. I could tell you, I remember very little beyond that. I woke up the next morning, still left thinking about what exactly I had just experienced. It must have been the meds, I tell myself. The one thing I did notice is that my ears were still freezing. Odd, considering we were in the middle of July. I then get a call from Dan shortly after. I was wondering if you could cover the whole day at the store for me. I paused. Is there something wrong, Dan? He hesitates. N no. Dan quickly spurts in an egregious manner. Um, sure, I'll cover the day. The phone clicks. Dan hangs up. What was that about? Maybe he's coming down with the same illness as me. Either way, I'm left with added nauseousness to my stomach. I then head off to the store. On the way to the store, I was honestly still thinking about the strange encounter I had with Dan over the phone, pretty much wondering if he was okay and all. Minutes fly by and hours pass. Everything starts to seem standard for the better half of the day, which was a major relief considering I was still feeling uneasy when I had arrived. Then, an hour before closing time, I take the liberty of playing some of my favorite tunes, ranging from Johnny Cash to Pink Floyd, my classics. Dan would not approve, but what the hell, I thought. Finally thinking my day was gradually improving, my music cuts out from the overhead speakers. Static begins to intrude. What the fuck? All I can say is what happened next changed everything. To this day, I'm still a bit dumbfounded. Nervously twirling my right thumb against my index finger, I began to inspect the store, cautiously walking, looking for anything that may be out of the ordinary. Suddenly, the overhead speakers begin projecting a strange sound, alien by most human standards. It's beautiful to say the least. The sound began to shift in frequencies as if dancing across the thrift store's creaky walls in elegance. I could feel it all across my body. I'm left in a daze, unable to speak. I think I spent hours standing in one place. At one point, I remember the room turning purple as if standing directly under a blacklight. My eyes watering, I began to feel a warmth shooting through my veins, no doubt emanating from the constant movement of these shifting frequencies. Unable to move, I began floating in a standing position, about five inches from the ground. I feel a presence shifting behind me, but I don't feel scared. I close my eyes, my body now spinning in a clockwise motion. I hear a voice behind my ear softly whisper something I couldn't comprehend. I give a loud gasp. I try to open my eyes, but I couldn't. I feel like my body was distorting and glitching as these loud sonic waves began pulsating and bouncing across the room. Whispering in my ear again, I hear, We are him. He was not wise. He has deceived us. I tried to respond, but it was of no use. You may not understand at the moment, and surely this will pass. Confused, I could only cry out in agony. We had a deal. He did not hold. We have appeared before him, but chose you as his pawn. I then hear silence for what felt like an eternity. Again, whispering, he was not wise. He has deceived us. He ran, but there is no running when you are nil. There is no running when you are nil. I felt like crying at this point, and I did. I felt my chest thumping as a swift burst of air came racing down my lungs. I gasped. We will disperse, but before we do... Feeling my voice come back, I cry out. Who are you? It responds. We are what matters. We are everything. We will disperse, but before we do... It pauses for a moment. We would like to extend you an offer. We will share the meaning of all of this. This thing. The secret to all of this. This thing you call life. It will all make sense. We will give the meaning of life to you. At a price. At this point, I'm still unable to see and willing to do just about anything. I ask a very defeated, How? I hear silence for a few moments. With your life, we will share with you the meaning of life. We will give you a moment to absorb this revelation. Then, we will take what is ours 
but still confused and unable to process what was being said to me, I cry out, I just want to go home. Please, I, I want nothing to do with this. I just want to go home. Very well, it tells me. Suddenly, the pulsating stops and my eyes open. It was night out and the store was in complete darkness. Hardly able to breathe, I stumble outside and race into my car. I needed to get the fuck out of there. Four years have passed since then. I still can't explain what happened to me that night. I even tried calling Dan that night when I got home, but the line went straight to voicemail. No one knows where Dan went and I honestly question whether he's still alive. Upon doing a quick Google search, it appears that the building where I once worked is no longer there. All I can say is that I value my life so much more after that night, even if I don't know the meaning behind it. Okay, so that was one of the first stories I did. I really liked it because I like weird stories where weird stuff happens and you're not really sure what's going on. Um, I'll go ahead and play the original one now. You guys can compare it and see what it was like when I first started. Maybe you can tell me what I've improved on. To me, honestly, it all sounds the same. So, yeah. A mere four years ago, I was in a rough patch and working part-time at an old thrift store just a few miles from where I lived. I was the only employee other than the owner himself. The owner was a small elderly man with little to no family. And now that I think about it, he never mentioned if he had one. He kept to himself, but was always very nice to anyone he met, including me. His name was Dan. I'm pretty sure that wasn't his real name, but I didn't care to ask. Dan took me in when I didn't have much, and felt like I would do anything for him. He didn't have much either, since the clientele at the thrift store wasn't exactly poppin'. The store gave a very down-at-the-creek type vibe, and was apparently built from the owner's bare hands. Or so he said. He was old, but didn't give the impression of being a man of physical labor. I didn't question it. From time to time, things would break and doors would fall off their hinges. And I would do my best to put them back together. This place was no doubt showing its age, but it felt like home. The first thing one would notice about the store is its unique existence among the wild. I mean, with no exaggeration, the store was surrounded by miles and miles of trees and would often feel desolate. We had our regulars who would stop by, but other than that, foot traffic was bleak. Dan would usually work the mornings up to noon, and me, the second half, which usually meant closing the store by myself. And then one night, I wouldn't say I was necessarily afraid of the dark, but when closing shop... I felt a heightened awareness around me. I felt like something was watching. I just didn't know what. And by then, the sun was long gone, and all I could see was the dark outline of the towering trees. I didn't actually experience anything crazy, but I knew something was off. And I brushed it off and got in my car and drove off. Trying to sleep that night was a bitch. And tossing and turning, I felt a migraine rushing in like a destructive tsunami. I took some pain medication, then quickly dozed off into a dream. The dream was visceral. All I could see were swarms of vibrant colors swirling and swishing around, moving like mists against the wind. And suddenly my dream shifted. I was back at the thrift store. There I was, standing in front of this old but all too familiar thrift store. The night was as dark as can be, but my ears were numb from a chilling freeze. Directly behind the building sat a ginormous presence. In fact, the thing was colossal. I trembled, hardly able to speak, not knowing exactly what to say. It gave a very hesitant... Hello? Then without warning, this beast, the size of a 20, 30-story building, starts flapping its wings and sends me flying on my ass, jetting its massive body straight up into the air. It began to hover over me, wings flapping with tremendous force, making it hard to breathe. I tried to grip the ground as best I could, but I was no match for this destructive force, causing me to glide every which way. I surrendered, and I could tell you, I remember very little beyond that. I wake up the next morning, 
still left thinking about what exactly I just experienced. It must have been the meds, I tell myself. One thing I did notice is that my ears were still freezing. And odd, considering we're in the middle of July. I then get a call from Dan shortly after. Hey, I was wondering if you could cover the whole day for me at the store. I pause. Is something wrong, Dan? He hesitates. No, no. Dan quickly spurts in an egregious manner. Um, sure. I'll cover the day. The phone clicks. Dan hangs up. What was that about? Maybe he's coming down with the same illness as me. Either way, I'm left with an added nauseousness to my stomach. I then head off for the store. On the way to the store, I was honestly still thinking about the strange encounter I had with Dan over the phone. I'm pretty much wondering if he was okay and all. Minutes fly by, and hours pass. Everything starts to seem standard for the better half of the day, which was a major relief considering I was still feeling uneasy when I had arrived. And then, an hour before closing time, I take the liberty of playing some of my favorite tunes, ranging from Johnny Cash to Pink Floyd, the classics. Dan would not prove, but, you know, what the hell, I thought. Finally thinking my day was gradually improving, my music cuts out from the overhead speakers. Static begins to intrude. The fuck? All I can say is that what happened next changed everything. To this day, I'm still left a bit dumbfounded. Nervously twirling my right thumb against my index finger, I began to inspect the store, cautiously walking, looking for anything that may be out of the normal. Suddenly, the overhead speakers begin to project a strange sound, alien by most human standards. It's beautiful, to say the least. The sound began to shift in frequencies, as if dancing across the thrift store's creaky walls in elegance. I could feel it all across my body. I'm left in a daze, unable to speak. I spend hours standing in one place. At one point, I remember the room turning purple as if standing directly under a blacklight, my eyes watering, I began to feel warmth shooting through my veins. No doubt emanating from the constant movement of these shifting frequencies. Unable to move, I began floating in a standing position about five inches from the ground. I feel a presence shifting behind me, but I don't feel scared. I close my eyes my body now spinning in a clockwise motion. I hear a voice behind my ear softly whisper something I couldn't comprehend. I give a loud gasp. I tried to open my eyes, but I couldn't. It felt like my body was distorting and glitching as these loud sonic waves began pulsating and bouncing across the room. Whispering in my ear again, I hear, We are here for him. He was not wise. He deceived us. I tried to respond, but it was of no use. He may not understand at the moment, and surely this will pass. Confused, I could only cry out in agony. We made a deal, but he did not hold. We have appeared before him, but choose you as his pawn. I then hear silence for what felt like an eternity. Again, whispering, He was not wise. He deceived us. He ran. There's no running when you are nil. I felt like crying at this point, and I did, and then felt my chest thumping as a swift burst of air came racing down my lungs. I gasped. We will disperse, but before we do... Feeling my voice come back, I cry out, Who are you? And it responds, We are what matters. We are everything. We will disperse. But before we do, it pauses for a few moments. We would like to extend you an offer. We will share the meaning of all of this. This thing. The secret of all of this. This thing you call life. We will give the meaning of life to you. At a price. At this point, I'm still unable to see and, and willing to do just about anything, I ask. A very defeated, how? I hear silence for a few moments. With your life, 
We will share with you the meaning of life. We will give you a moment to absorb this revelation. And then we will take what is ours. Still confused and unable to process what is being said to me, I cry out, I just want to go home, please. I want nothing to do with this. I just want to go home. Very well, it tells me. Suddenly, the pulsating stops. My eyes open. It was night out, and the store was in complete darkness. Hardly able to breathe, I stumble outside and race into my car. I need to get the fuck out of here. And four years have passed since then. I still can't explain what happened to me that night. I even tried calling Dan that night when I got home, but the line went straight to voicemail. No one knows where Dan went, and I honestly question whether he's still alive. Upon doing a quick Google search, it seems that the building where I once worked is no longer there. All I can say is that I value my life so much more after that night, even if I don't know the meaning behind it. This next story is the first one I ever did. I think it's called uh, Something is in My Backyard. I hope you like it. This happened a long time ago, probably when I was around six years old and my brother Chris was 12. My dad had wanted to go on a hunting trip, but Chris and I, along with my mom, didn't find any interest in the idea and decided that we would stay home. My dad changed the trip to go with his friends out of town for a few days, and everything was settled. So that was that. I knew that my mom didn't like it when my dad went out of town for the night. I didn't blame her. We had an incident more than once where someone would come pounding on our front door every couple of winters or so, always at night, and we always just hid in the house waiting for them to leave or for my dad to return home from work. I didn't think we had to worry because this wasn't winter, it was fall, hunting season. That weekend, my dad left and we were at home. We had been hanging around the house, not doing much, and now it was nighttime. I agreed to sleep in the same room as my mom, but Chris didn't want to and said he'd be fine in his room alone. I wasn't sure why I had woken up. I heard knocking on my mom's bedroom window. I didn't know what it was. Even though it was a one-story house, the window wasn't low. Whoever it was had to at least be an adult man's height. Another weird thing is I didn't know why our dogs hadn't reacted. They wouldn't stop barking even if they knew the person. I didn't know why I wasn't scared. I was an idiot and still confused from being woken up. I didn't wake up mom. Instead, I just went back to sleep. The next morning, nothing was out of the ordinary. I don't actually remember when I told mom, but when I did, she asked why I hadn't woken her. My true answer was, I don't know. I wondered if I had imagined it or been half asleep, but deep down, I knew it had actually happened. I pushed the incident out of my mind. One day, years later, we were talking about scary things that we had encountered. Chris had never known the knocking on the window or that anything had happened that fall a long time ago. Then he shared a story. He said, Once while dad was hunting, I heard knocking on the bedroom window. I had to hide my surprise that he had had the exact same experience that I had. There was no way he could have told the story the exact way I remembered it happening. Now I knew I hadn't imagined it. Someone had been there that night. I can't imagine why Chris wouldn't have alerted my mom as soon as it happened or told her the next day. I also can't help but wonder now so many years later, why we never spoke of the incident before, and who was in our backyard that night, and what were they planning on doing? This happened a long time ago, probably when I was around 6 years old and my brother Chris was 12. My dad had wanted to go on a hunting trip, but Chris and I, along with my mom, 
didn't find any interest in the idea and decided that we would stay home. My dad changed the trip to go with his friends out of town for a few days, and everything was settled, so that was that. I knew that my mom didn't like it when my dad went out of town for the night. I didn't blame her. We had an incident more than once where someone would come pounding on our front door every couple of winters or so, always at night. And we always just hid in the house, waiting for them to leave. Or my dad to return home from work. I didn't think we had to worry, because this wasn't winter, it was fall, hunting season. That weekend, my dad left, and we were at home. We had been hanging around the house, not doing much, and now it was nighttime. I agreed to sleep in the same room as my mom, but Chris didn't want to, and said he'd be fine in his room alone. We fell asleep quickly, and I wasn't worried. I woke up sometime in the middle of the night. My mom was sleeping. I wasn't sure why I'd woken up. I heard knocking on my mom's bedroom window. I didn't know what it was, even though it was a one-story house. The window wasn't low. Whoever it was had to at least be an adult man's height. Another weird thing was, I didn't know why our dogs hadn't reacted. They wouldn't stop barking even if they knew the person. So I wondered why they weren't going crazy barking over whoever it was. I don't know why I wasn't scared. I was an idiot and still confused from being woken up. I didn't wake up my mom. Instead, I just went back to sleep. The next morning, nothing was out of the ordinary. I don't remember when I actually told my mom, but when I did, she had asked why I hadn't woken her up. My true answer was, I don't know. I wondered if I had imagined it, or been half asleep, but deep down, I knew it had actually happened. I pushed the incident out of my mind. One day, years later, we were talking about scary things that we had encountered. Chris had never known the knocking on the window or that anything had happened that fall a long time ago. Then he shared a story. He said, Once, when Dad was hunting, I heard knocking on the bedroom window. I had to hide my surprise. That he had told the almost exact same story I had experienced. There was no way he could have told that story the exact way I remembered it happening. Now I knew I hadn't imagined it. Someone had been there that night. I can't imagine why Chris wouldn't have alerted my mom as soon as it happened, or told her the next day. I also can't help but wonder now, so many years later, why we never spoke of the incident before, and who was in our backyard that night, or what they were planning on doing. Alright, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, that's that story. Uh, it's definitely, you know, th these are some older stories. I started in 2016, and when I read this one, it was already a year old, so you can definitely tell how stories have changed over the years. But, yeah, I thought this was a fun little thing to do. Thank you guys so much for 300,000 subscribers. And, I don't know, I'm really bad at this stuff. I don't know what to say now. I'm just, I don't know, I'm gonna go. Bye!